Hi, this is Kathy Mulcahy again. This is part three of the Nursing School Survival Series. And this little video is about dealing with stress and test anxiety. If you have an anxiety disorder, please see a provider who can um, help you work through that. Um, but for ordinary test stress and test anxiety, this video might be helpful to you. Um, nursing school can be a very stressful time for most people. Um, and some people have such severe test anxiety that they've confided in me that after studying for hours and knowing the material frontwards and backwards, they got so um, stressed out and anxious that they made a lot of careless mistakes, either not reading the question or not reading the options or picking something because they misread it. Um, everyone gets anxious sometimes. But we're talking about the kind of anxiety that can hurt you. A mild anxiety or nervousness actually kind of increases your focus. Um, so you don't have to be totally zen to take a test. Um, a little tiny bit of anxiety actually increases your performance on exams. It increases your performance in clinical other aspects by making you more aware um, and more alert. However, when that anxiety escalates, it makes us miss important details. Um, it can lower your reading comprehension. It can make you second guess yourself, um, leading to changing answers, which is not a good idea. And it can cause you to make other errors that hurt your performance. So managing anxiety is really crucial to your success as a nursing student. It will be good practice for other stressful situations you encounter in nursing practice and in clinical. So learning to manage stress, and diffuse anxiety can be a very positive and empowering experience for you. One very quick technique to stay calm before an exam or during an exam is mindfulness. Mindfulness is a special way of paying attention to the moment that you're in. Um, there are a lot of good resources everywhere you look on mindfulness. There are books, there are websites um, that can train you if you need more than this little bit that I'm giving you. Um, but today we're going to practice just a one minute exercise on mindfulness using your breath. This exercise will help you train your mind to focus on your breathing. So get comfortable in a seated position in a quiet room free of distractions and start by noticing your breath. You don't have to change it in any way, just notice it. Feel the air going in through your nostrils, filling your lungs and then leaving your body. Feel your abdomen and chest rise and fall. Simply pay attention to your breathing. Now start by counting your breath. The first breath in and out is one, the next is two. Continue until you get to 10. If your mind starts to wander, that's okay. Notice that and gently bring your mind back to your breath and just pick up where you left off. Have patience with yourself and just return to the breath. Okay, now it's been a full minute. How do you feel? Check in with your mind and your body and just notice what you're experiencing. Congratulations, you've just learned how to practice mindfulness. It's okay if you didn't get all the way to 10. It's okay if you had to catch your mind wandering and bring it back a few times. Focus comes with practice. This can be a very good way to hit the reset button 
Of course, there are a lot of other exercises you can learn if you choose to pursue mindfulness or relaxation further, and I strongly encourage you to do so, especially if you have very strong anxiety. If you practice this just for a few minutes each day before maybe class or your study session um, throughout your day, pretty soon it becomes like an automatic response. Then when your exam day comes, you have this easy, accessible way to calm the chatter in your mind and focus on what you're doing. Another technique that we can use um, to reduce test anxiety, and it's very helpful if you practice it before your exams, is called imagery. A lot of athletes will use imagery to enhance their performance right before a sporting event. Um, they imagine themselves throwing, catching, whatever it is, you know, whatever skills that they need to have with perfection. So we're going to do the same thing to get you ready for your big sporting event, which is your exam day. Start by sitting in a comfortable position. Now close your eyes and take one long, slow, deep breath. In your imagination, see yourself in your normal testing environment. Maybe you're in your classroom. Maybe you're in a testing center. Envision that environment. See the other people around you. Imagine yourself sitting in your seat, waiting for the test to come. Now see yourself sitting in front of your exam and take in another slow, long, deep breath. Picture yourself reading the questions carefully, examining the options and saying, I know that. Picture yourself completing the test using whatever test strategies that you have that will help you get through. Completing the test, turning in the test if it's a paper and pencil exam, uploading it if it's an electronic exam. Picture yourself leaving the room with confidence knowing that you did your best. Now open your eyes. Practice that skill regularly. Practice it when you're studying, especially when you're doing those practice questions. They're so important. So here are some other basic techniques to reduce test anxiety. They might seem really simple and you probably have heard at least a few of them before, but they are worth repeating because they're effective. Now, if you followed my advice in video one regarding your study skills, realize that you've been preparing for this exam since before you had your first class. And then you sat in class and you gave it your best attention. And then you reviewed your notes after your class. And then you did questions. So if you paced yourself and budgeted your time wisely, you've been studying. So avoid the temptation to stay up all night and try and cram it all in. Sleep deprivation will only hurt your ability to concentrate. It will lower your reading comprehension and reading is everything on a nursing test. Every word matters. So even if you think, but I'm not ready, just go get some sleep. Some of us will never feel 100% ready for an exam. So do your best and then turn in early. Get up and tell yourself something positive. For example, I'm as ready as I'm going to be, I know I can do this. Another piece of advice about the night before the exam, I know it's hard, you get stressed out, sometimes it seems very tempting to make maybe a foolish choice and engage in alcohol or other behaviors to relieve the stress, do not. You wanna be at your best and that means using coping strategies that aren't gonna leave you foggy in the morning and unable to perform on the exam. I also want you to realize that anxiety can be contagious. So if there's someone sitting next to you who keeps verbalizing how nervous he or she is and it's making you more stressed, see if you can find a quieter seat and be considerate of other students. Positive thoughts only should be shared out loud. Really, you should only have positive thoughts inside your head. The negative ones won't help you. So steer clear of the nervous Nellies and don't be one yourself. Now, 
During the test, some students encounter difficult questions at the beginning of the exam. This has happened to a few students I know, and then they get flustered, and for the rest of the questions, they just kind of lose their focus. If you're taking a traditional paper and pencil test, skip those questions and move on to something you know better. It's okay, you can come back to them. The same applies if you're taking a computerized test that allows you to skip a question and return to it. That's what they might call backward navigation in your class. Um, so if you're allowed backward navigation, just skip it. Just realize that somehow the hard questions were up front. Something is going to come up if you're well prepared that you know better and you answer that first. If you're taking a test in some computerized format um, that doesn't allow you to have that backward navigation and go back and change your answers, Use all the test strategies that I'm going to give you in this series, make your best guess, and then move on. Don't let it shake you. It was one question. You probably have 50 or 75. Just let it go. Go back to your breathing for a second. Do that. Do a 10 second mindfulness. Regroup yourself and just go to the next one. After the exam, it can be very tempting to compare notes with your classmates. I, you know, I know it's tempting to do that. It's almost irresistible, but it tends to feed anxiety. People get talking, and well, I chose C, and you chose A, and now I don't know. If you prepared for the exam and you did your best, let it go. Give yourself a mental pat on the back for working so hard, and try not to obsess about the outcome. I know it's hard. We have a lot of... Um, we put a lot of emphasis on test taking and nursing education, but it's not really gonna help you to worry about it after the fact. When you get a chance to review that material, you also get the chance to improve your understanding of the material and you'll ultimately come out stronger regardless of the score you get on that exam. And part of this series will include something called an exam wrapper or you know, a way to reflect on your performance on the exam and maximize your plan for the next one. So when it's done, it's done. Do your best, let it go, go to the present moment, at least it's over. So some takeaway points. Mild anxiety can help you focus, but when it escalates, it hurts your ability to read, think, and answer questions. Mindfulness is a technique that can help you focus and reduce mental chatter. Begin by doing one minute of mindful breathing several times a day until it's instantly accessible to you. Use it before and during the exam to stay calm and focused. Hint number three, imagine yourself in that testing situation. Use imagery. Imagine yourself being calm, comfortable, and confidently answering the items. Use positive self-talk. Adopt an I can do this mindset. Know that by the time you get to your exam, you're as ready as you're going to be. Stay away from the nervous Nellies. No cramming all night, just restful calming activities and a good night's sleep. If you encounter difficult questions, skip them if you can and don't let it shake you. And if you can't skip them, do your best and then move on. Come back to your breathing if you have to. After the exam, remain positive. Pass or fail, one test usually doesn't make or break you. I know sometimes final exams, depending on your school's policy, um, can be worth a lot. But in most cases, a, one single test is not enough to ruin your life. You will have the opportunity to review what you didn't know. And your reasoning will be stronger, actually, maybe as a result of having gotten that question wrong. Um, remind yourself that you're always growing and you're learning and let it go. Okay, so those are some techniques to reduce test anxiety. Um, I can add more hints later on, but we're gonna move on to how to answer some of the more difficult questions and I'll start with the select all that apply in the next video.